G'day folks and welcome back to the channel for a preliminary look at Grim Dawn's patch 1.2 patch notes. Do be aware that these patch notes are in testing and will likely change a lot before they are ready to release patch 1.2 in its final form. With that out of the way, let's jump into this and go through some UI changes. You may have already noticed a few things, that being uh, the tonic of mending is now a button and uh, the two slots where I had my potions are now empty. So uh, you can change the key these are bound to. Mine were already on Q and on E. Um, I believe the default is E and R. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what the default is. And we also have this other bubble here, which is going to be where your movement skill gets put. Uh, every player from level one, I believe, is going to have a little dash ability. And then the, uh, the augments you can put on your medals. So, for example, on this one I have the emblem of the Riftstalker. Um, those will upgrade this skill instead, and we will have a new augment slot or something for the metal. Uh, Zantai was very cagey about talking about that. He implied there would be something, but uh, as for exactly what, I'm not sure. So that's the first part. The second part is all of my auras are gone. So I had auras from my amulet, I had... what other auras did I have? Primal Bond, it's just on, I can't turn it off, I'm right clicking to get rid of it, nothing. Um, I can't bind it to my bar anywhere. Bismil's Authority is an item. Um, this is actually a... Uh, not an aura, this is a temporary buff, so that's what that one is. Same with Call of the Grave, Mark of Torment, these are temporary buffs. Um, but uh, my Primal Bond is just on, Mog Dragon's Pact is just on, I didn't turn any of these on, I just logged on and they're active. So that's really cool. Uh, same with any Necromancer buffs I might have, um, Spectral Binding, it's here, it's just on. Didn't have to mess with it. Uh, Fiend's Flesh is from my boots. Um, I don't know how that is activated because um, I haven't been hit, So, but that's there. Um, Mogdrogan's has the wrong icon. Wait, no it doesn't. Mogdrogan's Arda. So that's from the uh, relic I have. Again, that's a permanent buff. It's an aura. It's just on. So no worrying about that anymore. Um, you do have to summon your pets, which, uh, depending on how you look at it, is good or bad. Um, they come summoned already on aggressive. You can change them, obviously, to whatever you like can tell them to go away, but they are summoned on aggressive. Um, from what I have seen, these skeletons are still summoned on uh, normal, because their leash range is still shorter than the other pets. So for example, these pets would, if Briggs here was an enemy, these ones would be attacking him, and my pack of skeletons, if I had one, would just be standing around me going, hey, what's going on over there? Just completely ignoring it. Um, I have tested that on the patch 1.2, and I have posted a thread on the official forums. Hopefully it gets changed. We'll see. Apparently I'm the only one in the world who plays skeletons. Everybody else seems to hate them, so there we go. Um, other UI changes. Um, let me see here. So in the options menu, there's a few changes here. Um, you can now display your auras for yourself and on others. You can also toggle any weapon effects you may have. So now you will see the uh, the leaves from Mogdragon's Pact, as well as the skeleton heads from um, Spectral Binding. They're now orbiting me. Um, doesn't look like they're going around the pets. Oh no, they are. They are. And they're applied to NPCs as well. So you can turn that on or off. If you happen to think that the auras are a little bit over the top, you can turn them off. Same with your weapon effects. Um, yes, we'll apply those. I don't really have any weapon effects on this character, I don't think. Um, let's just get rid of these pets for the moment so I can see what I'm talking about. So, I guess that sparkly thing is probably a weapon effect. Um, let's see if it turns it off. Yep, and it's gone. So you'll be able to see better uh, what your character looks like. Uh, what else we got in the options? So you've got monster icons. You can I increase the size of the monster health bars. There's also a percentage thing somewhere, health bar percentage values. You can turn that on. Pet health bars. 
All of these health bar options are really good. You can make the, the bars bigger, you can leave them smaller, uh, whatever you prefer. So this is just a preference thing. Um, this is key bindings. Don't think anything else has changed here. One other thing that's really big that's changed is, um, well, I still have rainbow filter on, but uh, check this out. Nice big blue beam from my uh, set item here. That, that S is from rainbow filter. The, uh, the item will be blue when it drops without that. Um, we also have the same, this is a set, a, a, uh, an epic item that is not part of a set, so no S there. Um, we also have the purple version of that ring. Uh, this will be purple, not pink, if you don't have rainbow filter on. So it'll be the same color as the Yugle's Ica you can see in the middle there. Um, but this ring um, does have a purple beam because it is a legendary item. So that's really cool. Um, let's just throw all these on the floor here and then we'll just wander over here. Uh, actually, you know what? Throw that one down there as well. You can see that's purple. It's got a purple beam. Now, if you come over here, um, we have a an MI. Now, this is just a single rare affix and a single magic affix on an MI. Nothing too crazy about it. Uh, no beam for this one, but it does have this fancy new symbol. This symbol tells you that this is an MI. This one here is a double rare MI, and you notice it makes a different noise. It also has a different symbol, and it has a green beam. Um, I don't have a non-MI double rare on me, so I can't show what that looks like, but uh, it's the same thing just without the symbol. It has the green beam as far as I'm aware. Um, I did pick one up earlier, um, but I didn't pay any attention to that, so that's my bad. Um, but anyway, that is the UI changes that I have noticed. I'm sure there's a couple more that I didn't notice. Oh, actually, where are they? You can toggle weather on and off, um, and you can toggle the day-night cycle on and off as well. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Um, day-night cycle, you can turn that off. So it'll just stay daytime all the time. Um, and where is the weather? You can turn like fog and stuff off. Where are we? Da, 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 da. I don't know, it's in here somewhere. Display time, so you can turn the clock on at the top there. The button for that is gone, which is, you know, sad. <laughs> I only just learned about the, uh, the button a little while ago. I miss it already. Oh, cooldown counter as well. So you can see the uh, the text there. I don't get a nice number, but um, the idea is that instead of having, or as well as having the uh, the big circle going, you get a uh, a cooldown as well. So you'll have a, a number in the middle there. Uh, this appears to be a work in progress kind of thing because uh, yeah, I don't see any numbers. <laughs> um, where was that? That was in the second one, wasn't it? Cooldown counter, yeah. Uh, that appears to be a work in progress, or potentially I haven't downloaded the correct files. Um, but you can see this kind of brightens up as it goes around. So you'll have a, a big glowing number there. Uh, right, let's jump into the patch notes. And this is going to be my first viewing of the patch notes. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Righto, here is the Grim Dawn version 1.2 playtest changelog. Now, uh, Zantai has put a big red message here, so I'm going to read this first. Version 1.2 is a massive update that changes fundamental aspects of the game. If you've never backed up a character for a playtest before, this is the time to do so. Bugs may occur and we will not be responsible for damaged characters. Okay, this is big and in red right at the top because it's important. If you want to play on the version 1.2 uh, beta test, basically, make sure you take backups of your characters because they can and probably will be destroyed at some point. There will be a patch that will break your character and you'll have to restore it. Make sure you back up if you're doing this. Okay, table of contents here. So major new features, Shattered Realm changes, Crucible changes, mod changes, tech changes, game changes, itemization. Here's all the itemization subcategories, classes and skills. A lot of skills have been updated. 
Um, I'm going to be a little bit light on some of the item changes because a lot of it is endgame sets that I'm not familiar with. Um, so, for example, if you start looking at changes on the Warborn set, well, I've never used the Warborn set, so I don't really know how it's changed. Um, some of it will be obvious, but um, just a little bit of a disclaimer there, I haven't used a lot of the endgame sets. So, major new features. You can now play the entirety of the game up to the level cap on the difficulty that's enjoyable to you. To support this, level scaling has been updated on normal and elite difficulty. Many areas on normal can now scale all the way up to level 100. Elite difficulty now scales up to level 100 in all areas. Loot quality and experience gains remain higher on higher difficulties. Okay, so if you play on elite or ultimate, you get better loot and otherwise, um, oh, and you get better XP as well. But otherwise, you can go to 100 in Act 1 Elite now if you want to. You can go to 100 in several areas in normal difficulty if you want to. So if you are waiting on those hardcore level 100 achievements, um, this could be a safer way of getting them for you. Uh, personally, I will continue to play on Elite and Ultimate, not because I'm trying to be a hero or anything like that, just because I find that the game is more fun when it is more difficult. Next bullet point. All loot tables have been overhauled with 30 to 60% less items dropping to compensate loot quality and iron bits dropped have been significantly increased. I did notice the iron bits were dropping in larger stacks. Um, and one of the other changes I know they'll probably mention it later in the, in the patch notes is a lot of the MIs now seem to drop a lot more, especially if you have a boss that has an MI. I went and killed Krieg and he dropped his weapon I went and killed, um, uh, what's his name? The guy at the end of Darkvale Castle. Um, I forget his name, but he dropped the pet ring, MI. From what I've seen, if a boss has a green MI, he has a 100% drop chance for that. Um, so yes, I was definitely getting more of the loot I was looking for. I was getting less loot overall, as this patch note says. Um, but honestly, I don't really mind not having to empty my bags so often. Right, next one. All bosses now have a 100% chance. Oh, we, I just went over that. <laughs> so I got ahead of myself. All bosses will now drop their non-legendary monster in frequency whenever you kill them. And I've only tested Krieg one time, um, but it did seem that he only dropped the one. So that'll have to be tested a couple more times just to see if he can still drop both. But... Uh, at this moment, with a sample size of one, he only dropped the weapon for me. Potions have been removed, um, so I already showed this one in the game. Dedicated potion buttons have been added to the quick bar. Uh, toggle buff effects are now automatically toggled on, no longer need to be on the skill bar. Um, note, if your character currently has two exclusive skills learned, the one with more points invested takes priority. So you can basically only put points into one of the exclusive skills now. Um, Although apparently if you had two exclusives learned already, uh, it will pick the one with the most points. You can now disable visuals for toggled buffs in the game options to improve visual clarity. I already showed this in the game, but this is basically you can turn your auras on and off uh, visually. Uh, new, vis new visuals have been added to alert you to legendary MI and double rare and double rare MIs. Uh, these were the green beams, the noises, um, and these icons. So MIs are now marked by an icon to separate them from standard rare items. Good stuff. Monster health bar options have been improved. You can now toggle thicker health bars and display percentage values. I don't think I'm going to use this personally. Um, I will give it a shot and just see how I feel. Uh, but I'm happy with how they are now. So it would have to be an improvement. And from what I saw in the live stream, the thicker bars are considerably thicker and are going to take up a decent amount of screen real estate. So I will probably leave these off. Um, percentage values for like act bosses maybe, but for, you know, tiny little spiders or whatever crawling around, I don't need to see the percent value of things I'm going to kill in one hit. Uh, monster health bar can now be toggled to also display all debuffs applied to the target monster. Now they showed this in the live stream. Um, so the same little icons that appear on your hotbar or above your hotbar to the right, when you have... For example, you have your defensive ability shredded or you have a poison dot on you or something like that. Those icons will now show up um, sort of across the top. You have the, the monster's 
um, name and health bar. And then just underneath that, you'll see, you know, I've poisoned this, I've electrocuted this, I've got a burn on this, um, you know, I've got reduce their resistances or whatever. There'll be little icons for it. Um, looks pretty cool. The nullification mechanic has been overhauled. It now purges all temporary buffs and disables toggle buffs for five seconds. No more fumbling through your skill bars to turn auras back on. Um, initially, I hated this change because initially this was two seconds. And I was saying that basically with two seconds here, you may as well just remove arcane um, or the, the nullification mechanic from the arcane heroes. You may as well just remove it from the game because with two seconds, you're going to be fine anyway. Um, five seconds seems like it might be a little more dangerous, so I will have to test this. I haven't ran into any uh, arcane heroes yet, uh, but they didn't make them any tougher. So outside of Deep Shattered Realm and Deep Crucible, you just kill them and they never shoot this and it's not an issue. Um, Zantai did show in the live stream one of the arcane heroes actually firing the big massive glowing purple beam thing. Um, or it's not a beam, it's more of a, a fireball that travels very slowly. Um, if you don't see it coming, then, you know, open your eyes because you're sleeping. <laughs> you'll see it coming from a mile away, you'll recognize the hero itself from a mile away, and you'll be able to kill it before it has a chance to fire that, that uh, nullification ball at you. Um, but if you do somehow manage to get yourself purged, uh, your buffs go away for five seconds and then they automatically turn on. Uh, new accessibility features, uh, disable day-night cycle, so the game will be perpetually set to noon. I guess for people who can't see very well in the dark, this could be good. Uh, if you don't want to see the fog, you can disable it. Um, I'm not really sure how that's an accessibility feature, but that might just be my normal privilege speaking. Um, cooldown counters, I wouldn't have thought this was an accessibility feature, but I would have thought this was just quality of life. Um, either way, you can see numeric countdown on your skills. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but um, it's nice to have this in the notes. And auto pickup radius can now be increased. Now, I don't know why this is a slider. You should just set it to the maximum and leave it there because no one is ever going to use any setting other than that. I don't want to have to do zigzags over a fight, um, over the area of a fight to pick up a whole bunch of things. I just want to walk through the middle and get it all. Um, this will be set to the maximum value and it'll be left there. And if the maximum value ever goes up, then so will the bar. Um, I can't see any reason why anyone would ever not use the maximum value. Okay, Shattered Realm Changes. A new Eternal Waystone has been added that can take you up to Shard 90 with rewards. Existing Deathly Waystones and Blueprint have been converted to this Waystone. A new Deathly Waystone is available upon beating Shard 95 or higher but any previously unlocked shards are retained. Um, the big takeaway here is um, you can go up to shard 90 and still get rewards. I believe this used to cap out at 80. But um, yeah, making the game harder, optionally harder, because you have to choose to go there, um, and still giving you rewards is good. Um, I would like to see this number be something like 150, because I think if you can get to shard 150, you should be getting rewards for it. Um, the number of builds that can get that far, you could probably count them on one hand with fingers left over, but um, I, I can't see any reason why it should stop at 90 either. If you can do the harder content, you should get rewards for it. Um, bragging rights is a reward, I guess, but um, I think that should be higher. And I can't see any reason why it isn't, honestly. But it is what it is. Shard 90 now gives you rewards instead of stopping at 80. Uh, shrines have been redesigned. These used to be um, several minutes long. I think it was 15 minutes. Or it could have even been an hour. Um, but these shrines have now been redesigned with powerful new temporary blessings. All of which boost your maximum movement. So... For the duration of these buffs, you now run, I think it was 15%, uh, Zantai did show it on the live stream, I'm pretty sure it was 15% max movement increase, um, and they no longer have any penalties, so shrine offerings have been updated. Uh, Zantai also mentioned that the achievement to have all five of these active at the same time will likely be changed to simply activate all five of them at some point. Um, so that made that one incredibly incredibly easy to get, um, which I guess is good. 
Uh, I when I got that achievement, I started at shard one and I just went until I got it, and it took me until like twenty six or twenty seven by the time I actually got that one. Um, right, increased monster percent crit damage by five percent on ultimate difficulty. Um, you should have enough defensive ability that monsters aren't critting you. Um, and I believe the crit value for most monsters by default is quite low, like 5 or 10%. So this is not a massive deal, um, but it does make ultimate a little more difficult. The a done deal achievement now requires you to interact with each of... Okay, so this is the shrines. Yeah, so interact with the shrines at least once rather than having all five effects active at the same time. Just makes it a little easier to get, a little more, um, a little less reliant on RNG. You just play it until you found all of them, and you're good to go. The Bone Bleach special match map has been disabled. It may return in the future after some much-needed maintenance. So Shattered Realm has some like special boss rooms, and uh, this was one of them, I believe. So this one has been disabled for now. Okay, Crucible. Waves 150 to 170 now have six mutators as a positive uh, a positive player mutator is always rolled for the fifth. I think he said the third or the seventh as well will always be, pos be positive. Um, let's see if he mentions that further down. Increased monster crit damage by 5% on Gladiator difficulty. This is probably just to match the 5% uh, on ultimate up here. Uh, reduced tribute penalty for failing the event, particularly if failing after using a checkpoint. Um, I play on hardcore. I've never failed. I don't know how this works, but um, I guess maybe you get less tributes if you fail the event, or maybe you get negative tributes. I'm not sure. Uh, tribute cap has been increased to 150. Spawn areas no longer grant a movement speed buff to monsters. Yeah, this was something I noticed as well. Uh, when the monsters spawn, they come running out of those little areas like a rocket. Um, no longer grants that. This is going to slow the Crucible down, actually, because a lot of those things die in one hit, and they would just come charging straight up to you and melt. So this is going to make the Crucible take longer to clear. Uh, nullification has been re-enabled in the Crucible. At a reduced duration, Loxmere Night Mage's nullification remains disabled, as it is an instant effect that cannot be dodged. Okay. I wonder if this change is going to be happening in the campaign as well, because um, I know Loxmere is, is quite scary, um, because there is no... Um, there's no big purple ball that comes out of nowhere and you don't really get a chance to see him coming because he's so fast um i might have to go and play with him on the campaign and just see if this is uh changed there as well I i'm sure he'll still have nullification but um yeah i kind of want to see how that looks okay modding changes i probably won't understand most of this um this i understand because he talked about it so the world map size limit has been increased from 2 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes. This should dramatically increase the size of mod maps you can create, but be aware that Crate will be using up some of that new space if you plan on modding the campaign map. Um, Zentai said that basically the entire current campaign fits in like 1.9 something gigabytes. Uh, so this basically allows modders to make Grim Dawn twice as big as it was, uh, with a little bit left over. Console now logs LUA errors, whatever they are. Um, faction slots have been expanded to 40, so you can add your own factions. Localization has been integrated into the game data. You can alter localizations with your mods by overriding and updating those files. Tech changes. Apparently there aren't any. Okay. Game changes. Here we go. A new monster mechanic has been added. Sundered. Some monsters and many bosses can now sunder your defenses, causing you to take percent additional damage for uh, a duration. Most monsters and bosses that previously reduced your resistances with their abilities now use this mechanic instead. Multiple instances of sundered do not stack, only the strongest effect is active. Now the example given for this in the live stream was Mogdrogan. Uh, Mogdrogan has 80% or something ridiculous uh, redu resist reduction on your lightning resistances. Um, instead of doing that, he's just going to sunder you now, and so you just take 
whatever amount of additional damage for however long. This does mean that you're not going to be able to trivialize him by just stacking, you know, 180% lightning resistances and then laughing at his damage. Um, you're going to have to be aware of what ability causes the Sunder and either dodge it or maybe run away for however long it is active. Um, more or less increases skill expression because it's not just, oh, I just overcap all my resistances by 30% and monsters just can't do extra damage to me. Uh, now they can. So this will be uh, good for people who want to be rewarded for dodging massive telegraphed attacks, and uh, I guess it's going to be bad for dum-dums like me who built silly tanky characters so they could tank that sort of stuff, so I'll, uh, I'll have to learn how to dodge. Uh, multiple instances of Sunder do not stack, only the strongest effect is active. Um, I'll have to play this, play with this. I'll probably go and uh, sacrifice a character or two to Mogdrogan and uh, see how it goes. Uh, all mutators no longer have negative effects. Many mutators have been redesigned. Monster mutators that granted resistances no longer do so. Positive player mutators are now rolled for the second and fifth mutators. Okay. So when you go into a dangerous area, um, like for example, the cave just south of Birch, where you fight, gosh, what's his name? The Chthonian who's there, he's got the sword that lets you summon another pet, uh, Salazar. Um, his little cave is a dangerous area and it has mutators. Well, the second mutator uh, will be a positive player mutator. So maybe it'll be run speed. Maybe it'll be you have more armor. Maybe it'll be you take 5% less damage from all sources. I'm not sure what they're going to be, but it's always going to be positive. And the first one is always going to be negative but now cannot grant resistances. So no more having your elemental damage completely nerfed uh, because you happen to be in an area that gave the monsters extra elemental resistances and had humanoid enemies who were wearing gear that also gave them a ton of extra elemental resistances. Um, so at least half of that is no longer a problem. Uh, challenge areas have had their loot quality and difficulty increased. Uh, this seems good. Um, what counts as a challenge area is a question I would have, uh, but I imagine it's all of those dangerous areas. Reduce the minimum chance to hit to 55 from 60%. This is an indirect buff to defensive ability stacking. No, this is a direct buff to defensive ability stacking. So it used to be um, that you could get to, I think it's 2,800 or so, is the point at which monsters cannot crit you anymore but they would still hit you 100% of the time. And then if you stacked more, and I can't remember what the number is, but you could get it up to the point where they could never crit you, and also they would miss you 40% of the time. So that was the cap. Um, now this is up to 55, or down to 55, which is, what, 1 8th, so 12.5% buff to avoidance. Um, it's pretty good will definitely help with uh, tankiness on some characters. Uh, you will have to stack a lot of defensive ability to get from 60 to 55, uh, because you had to stack a lot of defensive ability to get to 65 before. Um, so yeah, I think this is good. It's probably not going to affect a whole lot of builds, um, but uh, yeah, it's a buff for avoidance. Hero monster archetypes, e.g. Burning, Swift, etc. have had their special abilities updated or buffed. The most dangerous hero archetypes now have more prominent visuals to go with their, or to distinguish their presence. Bounty hero monsters that use a hero archetype now correctly include their archetype in their name. Um, I'm guessing this is going to be, um, so things, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of an example, but uh, say there's a monster that happens to be Burning, but his name is just Bernie McHotface, um, it would now be Bernie McHotface dash Burning, so it would tell you that he's a Burning hero. Um, many vanilla Grimdawn monsters have received a bump to their various abilities to bring them up to speed to modern standards. Uh, this sounds like it's going to be making the base acts uh, considerably more dangerous, which I personally like. Um, 
I thought they were a little bit easy, and then all of a sudden you get to Malmo, and there's a bit of a difficulty spike. Hopefully they smooth that out a bit. Um, I know a lot of people don't play on Veteran because uh, they don't like the extra health that monsters have, but um, anyway, that's another debate. We won't get into that here. Reduce monster physical damage on ultimate difficulty. Um, I didn't think this was that big of a deal, but um, yeah, characters are more tanky now, or take less damage, I guess. Many monster special attacks have had their animation speeds reduced. Now, does this mean the animation takes longer, or does this mean the animation completes faster? Um, I think this means the animation speed being reduced, so that would mean the animation takes longer to complete. I think that's what that means. Um, this should make it easier to dodge uh, the big telegraphed attacks. And I'm pretty sure I remember Zantai saying something about that in the uh, live stream. So easier to dodge big wind-up attacks is what I believe that means. Monsters with charged abilities or charge abilities are now significantly slow when charging. Yeah, I noticed this as well. Um, especially the Wendigos are no longer covering the entire screen in half a second. Um, they're, they're considerably slower now, so ranged characters actually have a decent chance of killing them before they get hit, um, which, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, lets you get away with a little less defense on your ranged character, I guess, uh, although I, I wouldn't do it just because I play hardcore and it's not worth the risk. Increased monster percent life leech resist. Um, this makes attack damage converted to health less effective. Uh, Zantai was saying it's about 30% less effective overall. Um, oh yeah, here we go. This is roughly a 30% reduction against an average boss. Um, is this just for bosses? Or is this for little uh, elites or champions or whatever they are? Like, is it only for the heroes with the skulls? Does it also apply to the, uh, the champions with the star above their head? Defensive healing abilities and devotions have received a buff to compensate for this change. Yeah, I noticed this. Um, I had a quick glance at a lot of the skills, and most of the changes to skills on masteries are all along the lines of increased this health regen, increased the uh, the amount of, you know, increased um, regen you get from this. There's a lot of extra regen stuff added in. Wendigo type monsters have had their zoomies reined in and no longer approach you at the speed of sound. Yeah, this is uh, this is the ones I was talking about. Um, the Wendigos out in the swamp will no longer jump on you from off screen. Um, they are no longer fly around the screen. Um, it's it's pretty good. Monster health now scales more appropriately in multiplayer. I've never played multiplayer, so I don't know what um, what more appropriately means. Um, whether they just didn't have enough health because now you have two players doing twice as much damage. Or maybe they had more than twice as much health because they're expecting the two players to kind of complement each other. I'm not sure what this one means. Uh, mutators that affect monster health are now more clear as to how much percent health they provide. I guess that's good. Remove defense against pets from celestial bosses and reduce their damage bonus against them. Uh, this is good. Um, I've got a couple of pet builds, and uh, they tank act bosses like they're nothing, and if I put them anywhere near a Celestial, they melt like a, I don't know, block of butter in the midday sun. Like, they, they die very quickly against Celestials. Um, they more or less change the fight from a, you know, stand and tank, and you'll lose a, a pet occasionally, but you've got two Briarthorns, so one of them can take over when the other one's dead. Um, they changed it from that to, um, you know, against a Celestial, you can't tank it. You run around in circles and resummon pets and hope that they do a bit of damage before they die. Um, so yeah, this seems like a good change. Tripled the rate of infamy gain with the outcast faction when choosing to be hostile. Okay, uh, I've never done the infamy grind with the outcast, but from what I've heard, it was horrible. It took forever. Um, so I'm glad to see this is being uh, reduced, or uh, cut in three, uh, because the Spellbreaker I'm playing at the moment, I am planning on going hostile in Ultimate to farm her hat, 
And uh, if I could get that done three times faster, I would be much happier. Uh, double the rate of infamy or fame gained with Kaima's Chosen and Order of Death's Vigil. Um, I don't really care about the fame gain. Uh, that's already quite quick. The infamy gain is good. Um, let's say you pick the Order of Death's Vigil to side with, because, you know, why wouldn't you? Kaima's Chosen suck. Um, but regardless, whichever one you pick to side with, you're only really going to be fighting the other one in half of the Blood Grove and then in um, in the fort where the ashes are kept near Fort Icon. And that's it. You never see them anywhere else. Um, yeah, usually when I get to level 100 and I've completed Ultimate, I'm nowhere close to Nemesis with either of these. Um, so increasing that is really good. Increasing the fame, I, I don't care. They're always... They're always revered before I finish ultimate, so it's not an issue. Uh, pets now default to aggressive stance rather than normal. The setting can still be toggled on a pet by pet basis as desired, except on skeletons because uh, skeletons get nothing. Uh, that's that's actually not true. They are getting buffed. Okay, itemization. Um, like I said, I'm going to gloss over a lot of this stuff because uh, a lot of the end game sets I haven't played with, but we'll go through what I do understand. Uh, reduce cooldown and increase range of all movement skills granted by runes. Damage has been adjusted accordingly for skills that deal damage. So less cooldown, increase range. They probably had their damage adjusted downwards. Um, I don't think I really mind that. Increase cooldown is, or sorry, reduce cooldown so you can use them more often. Um, I like because I like my movement skills to be available when I push the button. Maximum sell price has been reduced at merchants, but iron bit drops have been increased to compensate. Um, I don't think the iron bits thing is a big deal. For me personally, I finish a character, I get to level 100, I usually have between sort of 5 and 7 million iron bits on hand, and that's with turning magic items off at level 5, and, um, and not really trying to farm for bits. So Iron Bits has never really been an issue for me, so I don't think I really care about this. But um, getting Iron Bit drops, um, you get a lot of these from treasure troves, and I did a lot of treasure trove hunting, so that might be why I've never had any issues, and it sounds like I'm going to have even less issues, but we will have to wait and see. Um, further increased loot drop weights for affixes that match the base item's type. Uh, this could be good or bad, depending on how you're looking at it. So on my Spellbreaker at the moment, I'm using a uh, an Ice Mace, which uh, which gives me bonuses to Trozen Sky Shot. Um, and it has double cold affixes, which is good, is what I want. So increasing the loot drop weights for the cold affixes on my cold weapon is really good. However... On my Ritualist, I'm using a Poison-type weapon that doesn't appear to have affinities for pets, even though it is also a pet item, which means it's going to be even harder now to get a good double rare on that particular item. And since it's not a boss drop, it's a random drop from enemies, um, probably my best bet now for getting a double rare pet affixes on that particular item is to farm the vendor who sells it which means hours of running back and forth from that to the door and then back again because that vendor happens to be in the Court of the Magi. Um, so this could be good or bad depending on what weapon you're using. If you are playing a fire conversion Kabbalist and you're doing fire pets, then your weapon is a has a fire affinity and does not have pet affinities. So you're going to have the same problem there as well. Um, but I think in general, for most builds, that is probably a good thing. Uh, tonics of Clarity and Tonics of Tonic of Reshaping no longer drop as loot. So these are the potions you get that will allow you to reset your attributes and your devotions. They no longer drop as loot, but you can now craft them with Celestial Smiths. Um, I would have to look up which ones are Celestial Smiths, but... Um, I think it's going to be like the skeleton in the ne necropolis and um, the ones that aren't at towns, basically. 
um, but I'm not sure on that one. I would have to check. All rare mastery and mastery combination prefixes have been redesigned for general use rather than winning the skill bonus lottery. Okay, I don't know exactly what this means, but all rare mastery and mastery combination prefixes. So this, I think, is going to be things like the necromancer's prefix, which has plus two to some random, well, not random, it's a selection of like five or six different necromancer skills. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to change that, but uh, this would be good if it's just, you know, plus two points to all necromancer skills. No, that'd be way too powerful. How would they do that? I don't know. I'll have to look into this one. This sounds interesting because getting an item like a, a necromancer's bone spike of vitality or something could be really good if it's uh, plus two to ravenous earth but if it's plus two to raise skeletons on your vitality caster then the weapon's worthless you know um so this could be good um i would have to look into what exactly they've done there magic mastery prefixes have been removed from the oh okay so necromancers no longer exists and the rare ones have been redesigned for general use rather than winning the skill. So potentially they've removed skill bonuses from these rare combinations. Um, I'll have to have a look at that. Uh, new items will no longer roll them. Instead, caster weapons and offhands can now roll percent offensive ability, percent defensive, and percent spirit. So we just lost a bunch of skill points? Is that what I'm hearing? That could be not great. <laughs> Uh, percent resistance magic prefixes that offer two of the three elemental resistances have been removed. Thank God. Fire resistance is dead to me. Cold resistance doesn't exist. And lightning resistance is to be avoided. These single elemental resistances were terrible. I, I cringed every time I saw an item that had them. Um, I, I hate items that have plus 40% cold resistance. Like, why, why do I need that? I still have to cap fire and lightning, and I can do that with elemental and cap all three. Why would I ever want 40% cold resist when I can have 20% elemental? Um, oh, at level 70 plus. Okay. Okay, my jubilance was somewhat premature. Uh, increased chance of rolling percent elemental resistance to compensate. Okay, good. Um, level 70 plus, I guess, is not the end of the world. Um, I would have preferred it to just be always, though. But we take what we can get. Okay, uh, increased chance. Yeah, we went through that. Uh, percent resistance magic prefixes that offer pierce or poison with a combination have been removed at level 70 plus. Increase the chance of rolling pierce and poison. Okay, that's fine. Health regen magic suffixes have been removed. Um, I don't really like that. Um, there was a lot of times when I was sort of Act 1 veteran where I would actually go looking for a belt, a ring, an amulet, all of the above, uh, specifically to get health regen, so that's unfortunate. Uh, percent armor magic prefixes have been removed, that's fine, I guess. They are useful. Um, Shield damage blocked. I don't really use shields, so this is not a big deal for me, but, um, I mean, I guess you can still get those on the rare ones. Um, Blood Letter added resist, Arcane Blaze added spirit, Cabal added health, added spirit. Okay, these are just making the rare suffixes a bit better. That's fine. Okay, Faction Equipment. Atef's Command replaced percent stun with 8% increased healing. I'm not sure what that item is. Same with this one, same with this one. Um, yeah, I don't actually know what any of these are, except Word of Salail is from the Salail Merchant. It's a book, um, but I've never used it, so I'm going to skip this one. Um, but these look like they're either side grades or buffs in general. Uh, except that one, that's a nerf. Anyway, um, all relic blueprints have been greatly simplified. Relic tiers now follow a linear progression that your character might logically use on their journey to level 100. Some relics have their stats adjusted to accommodate this progression. I'm wondering what this means. So relic tiers now follow a linear progression. Are we talking something like, um, you know, the, the level 25 
version gives you some basic stats and a proc that increases your armor and then you upgrade it at level 50 for example and it gives you all that stuff but a little bit more and then the proc now also gives you a heal and then you upgrade it again at 75 and it does all the same stuff and now it also gives you plus one to your class skill or something like that um i'll have to play with this and see what it's all about uh, Belgothian's Carnage added bleed damage. Terra added plus one occultist skills. Desolation added plus one shaman skills. Updated crafting bonuses removed. Percent lightning resist. Um, I guess this increases the number of builds that can use these, which is, I think, a, a good thing in general. So we'll see. We'll see about those. These may also have been um, relics that didn't have plus one to a skill, so that might be why that's been added. Okay. So some monster infrequence. Um, Aether Warped Cleaver, I've never used. Ascendant Source, I also haven't used. Uh, Bone Slicer, replace percent crit with cooldown reduction and increased bonuses to Judgment and Blood Pact. Okay, I think I'm going to go most of these Okay, this is huge for um, fire cabalist pets. 100% of vitality dealt as fire for pets. Um, this makes a fire pet cabalist a hell of a lot more viable at level 100, especially you would have to use the conduit, I think, to change the physical to fire. No, because the weapon's already got physical to fire, doesn't it? So skeletons will be 100% fire. Um, if you look at the Hellhound, you would have to get some sort of Chaos to Fire conversion. I don't know, I'd have to look into it a little bit more, but this this is really good for um, the Kabbalist Fire Pets leveling build that I have. That's really good for that. Um, that's pretty good. Malka does Dreadblade, I haven't used Night Herald, don't know. Obsidian Warcleaver, this is one of the big MIs for Soldier Force Wave, or it's the big MI for Force Wave. Reduced percent weapage da weapon damage modifier for Force Wave to 50%. Okay, so that's a nerf for Force Wave, which I guess is okay. Um, Force Wave has been ubiquitous, it's, it's everywhere. If you have a build that has Soldier in it, the recommendation is you level as Force Wave. So nerfing that a little bit is, is fine, I think. Added Vitality Damage to Pulsing Shard. That's interesting. Can you convert uh, Aether Ray to Vitality? I'm not sure. Um, what other ones do I use? Salazar's Sovereign Blade. Replace CDR with Defensive Ability. I see this as a nerf. Um, I guess it's not the end of the world. Spectral Bludgeon. Okay, this is really cool. So my Spellbreaker just got a buff. So this is the weapon my Spellbreaker uses, and I just got 8% Cold Resist Reduction modifier for Electra's Flash Freeze. This is going to come up later, um, but Electra's Flash Freeze is no longer worthless on bosses. Um, so that's really good, but uh, that'll come up later. Um, and I don't really use any of these other ones, so I'm not going to talk about them. Um, epic items... Uh, da, da, da. don't really use those. Legendary non set items, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because, again, I don't really use a lot of them, and a lot of these changes are kind of minor anyway. Um, let's see if there's any that really stand out for me. Nothing yet. <laughs> um, Oath Baron, no, not really. No, all right, I'm just going to skip that entire section. Um, it's here if you want to read it, uh, if there's any items you use. Corruption of Gargabol. I mean, sure. Legendary sets. I'm going to do probably the same thing. I will look at the legendary sets for any of my characters and see if there is anything like Gol's Malice for my Ritualist. Um, okay, just have some more damage for free. Awesome. Gull's Reach, uh, that is the gloves that summon the spiders, and they just do more damage now. Just, here you go, have some extra damage. Um, that's cool, I guess. 
Um, I thought the damage was fine, wasn't amazing, wasn't awful, it was fine, so now it's fine plus, I guess. <laughs> um, let me see. Chosen Skybreak set, increased defensive ability, okay, so basically who cares. I'm sure a lot of these changes are going to be huge for people who are using the sets, but um, the only one of those sets that I'm actually using at the moment is goals, so... I'm going to skip those and you can peruse those at your leisure. Uh, this video is already going to be huge. Okay, uh, Toggle Bus no longer have an energy upkeep, that's fine. Some energy regeneration devotions have had their energy regeneration reduced. Various mastery abilities have their energy costs reduced to compensate, or increased to compensate. Okay. Um, this is basically uh, your, your buffs don't uh, reserve your energy anymore. Uh, no, sorry, they they still reserve it, they don't drain it. Um, so some buffs had, you know, cost you 10% of your mana reservation, or reserves it, reserves 10% of your mana, but it also reduces your uh, mana regeneration by 3 a second, or whatever. And if you stacked up enough of them, it was possible to just drain your energy bar, um, which was hilarious, but probably unintended. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Devotions, Behemoth, increase health regeneration to 70 and percent health regeneration to 80. Um, that's actually pretty big. A lot of casters use Behemoth as part of their sustain, so um, yeah, that's really nice. The Candle, reduced energy regeneration, reduced energy re regeneration. I guess this is to make up for your auras and stuff, no longer draining your energy. Um, the Ghoul got a buff. I don't think it really needed one, but hey, a little bit of en energy, uh, sorry, health regen and health regen percentage. It's not massive, um, but it is useful. Um, the Harpy, Harvestman Scythe. This is a lot of health regen increases and energy regen decreases. So that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, Herian. Increased percent shield damage blocked to 30, okay. Uh, Light of Empyrean, increased percent health to 20%. That's pretty big. That's a lot of health. Uh, health regen buffs again. Energy regen nerfs again. Scales of Volkama, reduce energy regen, increase health regen. I'm beginning to see a pattern. Um, shield damage block increase. Tree of Life. Um, the biggest pet trap devotion in the world. Um, health regen, regen buffed. Via shield damage block increased. So it seems like they're going for an increase in shield block and regen and a decrease in energy. Um, Arcane Barrier. So this is the crab. Um, increased absorption scaling with rank. Uh, this is really good. Uh, I thought the proc was already really good, especially for leveling in hardcore. Um, especially on, for example, a Death Knight who is already quite tanky. Uh, this The shield was really, really nice. It blocks everything that isn't physical pierce or bleed. Um, and it triggers when you hit. So you can have it up fairly often. And uh, it really helps with feeling tanky. That's why I put it on the Spellbreaker as well. It's really helped. So uh, I quite like that change, making it better. Uh, it was already good, but now it's going to be better. All right, next up, Cleansing Waters. This is from um, one of the blue ones at the top. Uh, not the Tree of Life, it's the uh, the other one next to it. Increase radius to 3.5. This is like, um, yeah, it's a heal. And I think it uh, nullifies any detrimental effects on you as well. Um, a lot of pet builds take this. So increase radius, I guess, is really good for applying to pets. So that's nice. Um, Dryad's Blessing, increase health scaling. Uh, that's nice. Buff for healing. That's cool. Or, um, yeah, buff for healing. Okay, cast speed on Ghoulish Hunger. That's interesting. Um, I guess if you have a spell that has weapon damage on it, then uh, you would take the Ghoul for the um, the attack damage converted to health, and now you get a bit of cast speed. So, yeah, that's nice. Increased healing is... A little bit weird, um, whenever I've seen the ghoul proc, my health bar immediately went to full and stayed there for the duration. Um, so I guess I don't understand that, but hey, it's buff, I'll take it. Um, Giant's Blood, 
Increased duration and health regeneration scaling with rank. Good. Um, Giant's Blood, I believe, is the proc on the behemoth, so this, I guess, was one of the non-proc nodes, um, and this is the proc. Uh, healing Rain is going to be from um, the same blue ones up the top of the tree. It's, uh, I think it is the tree, actually. I should have another window open with, uh, hang on, let me do that. Let me, let me do the thing that I should have done a while ago. Let's bring up the devotions. So healing rain is from, yeah, it's the tree. It's from Tree of Life. And uh, what did they change it to? Increase health regen and percent regen scaling with rank. Um, yeah, it's already got a decent amount of health regen on it. So, I mean, a buff's a buff, right? So we'll take it. Inspiration, that's the Bard's Harp. Increased defensive ability scaling. Um, okay, more defensive ability. It's a buff, it's great. This one I really like. Um, Phoenix, I've been playing with the Spellbreaker with this, and the absorption on it starts out pathetic, um, like barely even relevant in Act 1, um, and then it scales up to be still quite bad. So we'll have to see how much scaling it has, um, but this is good. I think the Phoenix Fire might actually be useful for non-fire builds. Uh, shield Wall, increased base armor by 10%. This is a massive buff for armor, so um, that's going to be uh, the proc on... It's not the proc on Obelisk. What is that then? Let me just do a quick search for that. Interesting, I don't see it. <laughs> Maybe I spelt it wrong. Shield Wall. Because I was thinking this was going to be one of the two nodes near, so Shield Maiden or um, Obelisk of Men here. Uh, but it isn't, so is it from the Anvil? No, it isn't. I'm not sure where that one is. But 10% uh, base armor is a pretty big deal. Increase armor scaling for Olzad's Decree and Wayward Soul. These are uh, also quite good. Okay, now we get into the masteries. So let's go check out Soldier. Deadly Momentum. This, I believe, is on the Cadence proc. Um, it is indeed. So this currently gives you flat fizz damage and trauma for a couple seconds and a little bit of percent damage. So increase the duration from four to five seconds. Okay. Uh, fighting Spirit. Reduce cooldown and duration to 5. So the cooldown was 18 seconds and the duration was 8. So this is actually a buff, as long as you're being hit to trigger this. Um, this is a buff. So Fighting Spirit can now be active all the time if you're in a fight, instead of just um, for 8 seconds and then you have to wait for 10 seconds to get it back. So that's a buff. Um, Force Wave, increase physical damage scaling with rank. Um, Okay, it's more damage, it's a force wave buff. We had a reduction in the power of the weapon MI for it, so maybe they've moved it to the skill instead. I guess that's fine. Uh, Rending Force was the first mutator for force wave, so here's some more physical damage scaling for force wave. Uh, Markovian's advantage is a proc. Increase base percent weapon damage by 15%. So, uh, with one point, it was 110%. So, I guess that's 125% now. I guess that's pretty good. Um, it's it's a proc, so it's only a chance to use with a default weapon, but still good. Then here's Bulwark. That is one of the um, exclusives. It's the tanky exclusive. Increase health regen and percent health or healing with rank, so just more tanky. Minia's Will is the Circuit Breaker. Increase the heal and the health regen scaling with rank. I already thought this was a very good Circuit Breaker. Um, I would say it's probably like third or fourth best one. Um, so making it better is a good thing for me. Um, Overguard is not something I typically use. Um, however, increasing the shield damage blocked and the health regeneration 
increase energy cost scaling. That, I mean, I would have to see what the um, the actual increase was, but it seems good, I guess. Markovian's defense. Um, is that the modifier on? Yeah, it is. So that's the modifier on Overguard. So this one reduces the recast timer and adds retaliation damage. Uh, no, sorry, reduces retaliation damage and total damage. So this basically means you do less damage, but you are more defensive. Um, reduced percent damage modifier penalty to minus 10%. So you take less of a penalty there. So that's a buff as well. Uh, veterancy was kind of meh. It was okay. It was pretty much a one pointer though. Um, and it's probably going to stay a one pointer, but increasing the health regen and regen scaling. I'm seeing a pattern here. There's a lot of buffs to health regen and a lot of buffs to percent health regen. Um, Zohan's technique is another um, uh, WPS skill, so weapon proc skill. And a uh, bit more damage. Pretty good. Can't complain about soldier changes, I guess. Demolitionist, I don't typically play. Um, I have played it as a support for a purifier, uh, but basically all I did was I would use fire strike and, and took some passive buffs. So, um, cooldown reduction on mortar trap is good, yeah, for sure. Flashbang energy cost is now going to be more. Um, I don't think that's a big deal. Temper. Um, let me just double check. Temper is, yeah, so temper is the modifier on flame touched. It gives you uh, flat fizz damage, a little bit of defensive ability, and some percent damage for physical pierce and internal trauma. Also gives you some retaliation damage uh, buffing. So this basically defensive ability scaling with rank to 120 by rank 12 and 220 by max ultimate rank. So what is it at the moment? So at the moment at rank 12, Defensive ability is 108, so plus 12 defensive ability. Um, what's that, 9% or something? Not bad, I guess. Uh, vindictive Flame, increased health regen. There it is again. Okay, Occultist. What has the Occultist got? Blood of Dreg. I noticed this with the Nightblade as well. But uh, Blood of Dreg, reduced cooldown to 12 seconds and increased duration to 60 seconds. Increase energy cost and health regen scaling with rank. Increase percent health scale, st uh, scaling at ultimate ranks. Okay, so Blood of Dreg and uh, where is it here? Pneumatic Burst are basically buffs that you want to keep active on you all the time. And when you turn them on, you get a heal. Um, this lets you, one, not worry so much about the buff falling off because previously uh, Dreg's, sorry, Blood of Dreg had a uh, 30 second duration and a 15 second recharge. So it's now going to be available for five heals during the duration. Um, and the duration's refreshed every time you use it. So basically it just lets you worry less about this buff falling off and uh, you can use it as a heal every 12 seconds instead of every 15. Um, this is really good. Uh, focus gaze, increase fizz damage reduction to six that sounds like it's going to be a, yep, there it is, the second modifier on Blood of Dreg, or sorry, Dreg's Evil Eye. So this one, uh, da, 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 da. although this is the cooldown node, so this gives it, um, gives it a, a cooldown so you can't spam it anymore. Seems good, just increase the duration. Uh, what is it currently? Four second skill recharge and 18% for four seconds. Yeah, so this is basically giving it time to travel in the air, more or less. So at present, when you cast it, it takes a second or so to fly from you to the target and then pop and apply the debuff. And the recast starts as soon as you cast it. So this gives you a little bit of time to not cast it exactly on cooldown and still maintain the buff. So that's good. I, I like those changes. Again, really good changes. Um, the Nightblade changes I definitely liked. 
So ABB's animation speed increased by 20%, um, definitely good. And increased cold damage scaling with rank. Okay, this really needs to be on the lethal assault buff because plus like 100% cold damage for 12 skill points is garbage, basically. Um, but I guess getting uh, cold damage scaling with rank so it adds flat dam uh, flat cold damage as well as your weapon damage. Um, I guess it just means it's going to be doing more damage, which is good because I think a lot of people will use it as a one pointer and then max out lethal assault, which <sighs> lethal assault's not good. Anyway, duration on lethal assault was doubled, which is nice. Um, but I mean, what is it? Let's put some points into it. So with 12 points, it's even worse than I thought it was. With 12 points, it's only 65% cold damage added. Um, yeah, that's that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. Okay, Amarasta's Quick Cut is one of the weapon procs. Increased base weapon damage by 10%. Eh, it's a damage buff. I like it. Um, animation speed, weapon damage buff. Again, this is a buff. I like it. Blade Trap. I'm not sure what that means. Where's Blade Trap? There it is. What is it saying? Added percent trap resist. Oh, okay. So you're shredding trap resist reduction on the enemies. Okay, that's cool. Uh, minus 40% by rank 12. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. I think that um, will keep them trapped for longer, if that makes sense. Yeah, awesome. I haven't used Blade Trap an awful lot, but um, it does sound it does sound like that's a, a really good buff. Uh, this is the one that I was super excited about. Uh, increase the base duration of pneumatic burst to a minute, so that is double, I think. Uh, nope, that is 150% buff, so 250% multiplier. That's really good. Um, doesn't say, oh no, it does increase the heal and the regen scaling. Yeah, this is really good. Uh, this is the same as Blood of Dreg from above. Um, I was already getting the duration increased to two minutes because of Igor's metal. Um, this, or oh, sorry, by two minutes. Um, this will increase it again. So that buff will never fall off, which is really good because Shadow Dance is amazing. But if it falls off, suddenly you get very, very squishy. Um, Breath of Belgothian is another one of the procs from memory. Uh, no, it's definitely not. Is that the... I'm not sure what Breath of Belgothian is. Where is that? Okay, this is embarrassing. I can't actually find it. Okay, I'm just going to mouse over every single one of these until I find it. It sounds like it's a cold thing. No, nope, it's not the final ability in that one that I never use. What are they doing? Increasing percent health regen to 50%. Oh, it's the modifier on um, on pneumatic burst to make you, or to let you use it more often and give you more health regen. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then Whirling Death is the, uh, the 50 point uh, WPS skill. So increased base weapon damage by 15%. Um, from 200 to 215, not massive, but still pretty good. Um, this is probably my favorite change so far. Um, probably the Blood of Dreg one as well is quite nice, but I use Pneumatic Burst way more often. So um, this is definitely my favorite change so far. All right, on to Arcanist. Um, this one's going to be big for me because I'm currently playing a majority Arcanist character. Um, so Arcane Will... That is a lot of defensive ability. I mean, granted, that's max ultimate rank. It's not just 10 points into it, but that is a lot of defensive ability. 
Um, reduced energy regeneration. <laughs> Seizing that same theme going on here. Uh, mirror costs more energy. I guess it makes sense. Um, mirror, I think, is still way too strong. Um, I think what they did with it in Season 5 was pretty good, with it being reduced to 75% of all incoming damage, instead of just, I take no damage. Um, this is still okay. Okay, Electra's Flash Freeze. Added percent freeze resist reduction scaling up to minus 40% by rank 12. This is huge. This means it can now affect bosses, as long as they are not just straight up immune to cold. Um, the Mage Hunter set does something similar, um, and Zantai said that the, the Mage Hunter set will still be better, but you can now at least use this to do something on bosses, and hopefully, um, well, not hopefully, uh, you will be able to use this to actually apply cold damage with the skill as well, which is, um, I think, the main complaint. Although a lot of people, um, I guess, would like to use it for the fire resistant shred on it, or the uh, or the physical resistant shred, maybe if you're playing a battle mage. Um, either way, this this is now my favorite change. <laughs> uh, Wrath of Agravix increased percent damage modifier bonus to 180 and added weapon damage. Really? Which one is Wrath of Agravix? Da, da, da. Where are we? Here we go. It's uh, the first modifier on Kalidor's Tempest. Okay. It's not the one I thought it was. Um, it's a 10% total damage increase, and 40% weapon damage bonus is really good. That means you can lifesteal from it. I mean, you already could, but it was at 12% weapon damage. Now it's going to be 52. Hang on, what is that? What is that at max rank? Okay, weapon damage is actually 115, with 16 out of 16 in Kalidor's Tempest. So, it's going to go up to somewhere around 160, I guess. Um, pretty good. Uh, definitely my favorite change so far is Electra's Flash Freeze. Okay, nearly done. Shaman. What do we got in Shaman? Conjure Primal Spirit. All attacks now correctly deal base physical damage instead of pierce. Um, that sounds like it's a bug fix more than anything else, which uh, is definitely a good thing. Okay, Feral Hunger. That is uh, the first multiplier, uh, the first modifier, sorry, on Brute Force. Increase base percent weapon damage by 20%. So with one point, it does 110%. So it's like, what, 15% increased damage. Um, pretty good. I did notice that at uh, at lower levels, or when that's not uh, sort of maxed out, the chance for it to trigger is quite low. Uh, with 10 out of 10, it's 26%, and with only a single point, it's 12%. So, yeah, it's a damage increase. You can't complain about damage increases. Um, increase regen, more regen, more regen, more regen. So Mog Dragon's Pact and Heart of the Wild, which is the first modifier on Mog Dragon's uh, Pact, you just get more regen scaling, which is really good. Um, upheaval, again, that's the second modifier on Brute Force. Um, increased damage, again, really good stuff. And Wendigo Totem, increase the healing and increase the energy cost. So energy looks like it might be an issue for some builds now, um, which to me at least is good because it adds another problem you need to solve. Um, so yeah, so uh, Shaman changes, more damage, more health regen. Um, can't complain. Inquisitor. Inquisitor is probably my second least played class after only Demolitionist. Um, but I should play a Purifier. Anyway, um, Bursting Round, Chilling Rounds, Increased Damage. So these are procs for your ranged weapons. Um, more damage can't complain. Inquisitor's Seal, energy cost increase, um, that, that same theme coming through. And Null Field, which is the first modifier on Inquisitor's Seal, redesigned to support two-handed weapons playstyles. I wonder what that means. Does that simply mean that this now has a line that says this only works if you have a two-handed weapon? 
I'm not sure. Um, storm spread, increased base weapon percentage. Um, so storm spread is the final uh, weapon damage proc skill. It's uh, piercing and lightning damage. So increased base weapon percentage by 3%, which with one point would be a 10% increase. So not bad. And Word of Renewal got the uh, the Blood of Dreeg slash Pneumatic Burst treatment. Um, this is good. This is... Those three and Alexa's Flash Freeze are the, the four big winners for me in this. I really like those changes. I'm quite happy with those. Okay, my favorite mastery, the Necromancer. Call of the Grave now costs more mana. Okay. Decay, which is the first modifier on Ravenous Earth. Added one second duration. Um, yeah, that's cool. So that's basically every time something gets hit by one of the little balls that comes out of the Ravenous Earth, they get a 2% reduced damage, or I guess it's going to be, what, 12% or something with more points in it. Um, but that only lasts for one second. That's now going to be two seconds. So that gives it time to get hit by another one of the balls. Um, it's a good thing, definitely. Mark of Torment, energy cost scaling, don't care. Duration and cooldown are now fixed at 5 and 12 seconds. Okay. That is a huge increase in how often you're going to be able to have this active. Uh, almost four times as often. Percent damage absorption now starts at 10, scales to 25%. Okay, so it's going to be much less powerful. Um, yeah, that's about 40%, <laughs> at least at the starting value. What are we looking at for, um, so with 10 out of 10, it was 50%, so it's half. Okay. Yeah, I can get behind this. Uh, this is a very large nerf for Mark of Torment. Um, but I did think it was too strong, especially in the hands of a Spellbinder, because you also had the Mirror. Um, those two both look like they're going to be able to be used much more often, um, but the Mark of Torment is considerably weaker. So that kind of sucks. Um, sucks that it's going to be about half as strong, but uh, oh, it is what it is. Necrotic Edge, uh, this is one of the two procs that uh, Necromancer gets, the other one being, um, what is it called, Reaping Strike, uh, which is down here. So that's basically more weapon damage on your procs, which is going to increase, or is going to result in more lifesteal, which is a good thing. I'm actually thinking uh, my first character in the new expansion is likely to be a Berserker Necromancer, which I'm thinking might actually be the Dreadblade that... Uh, that Zantai was talking about. Um, initially I thought it was going to be Nightblade, um, but we may end up with that being a uh, Dreadbreaker. But anyway, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, so the procs get more weapon damage, that's fine. Soul Harvest increased duration. So Soul Harvest is the last ability on the Bone Harvest line, and this one gives you flat cold and vitality damage to the spell increases your percent cold vitality frostburn and vitality decay damage and also gives your pets a vitality damage buff as well so increasing the duration means you can go longer in between recasts um, which is which is a good thing um, quality of life more than anything else but it is nice nine percent increased health on raised skeletons people who hate raised skeletons because they die are still going to hate raised skeletons because they die People who like raised skeletons are still going to like raised skeletons. They're just going to have to resummon them slightly less often. Um, I like this change. Um, it doesn't really make a huge difference, but um, yeah, it's it's good. I like it. Increased base armor percentage to 30% on Will of the Crypt. Um, let's have a look what Will of the Crypt normally is. So with one point... We had been getting uh, 10% armor, so I guess 40% now. Um, and then with 12 out of 12, it's effectively 100%, so 130%. That's pretty good. That um, that armor increase on those skeletons really helps with survivability. Um, and it could be a 
decent chunk of the reason why a lot of people hate skeletons is because they don't start with any armor. Um, yeah, skeleton buff, basically. <laughs> really good. Uh, defensive buffs for skeletons. Um, no offensive buffs. Reap Spirit now gets vitality damage. I believe that is not the pet. I believe that is the actual attack. Um, it was doing Aether damage and then Vitality Decay, so I think it's now going to do Aether and Vitality damage up front, and then Vitality Decay over time. So this could be a decent um, decent spell to use on a Vitality caster now. We'll have to see how much Vitality damage it gets. And then Reaping Strike we already covered. Okay, Oathkeeper. Lucky last. Ascension energy cost increase literally doesn't matter. That skill is amazing. Everybody's going to use it because it's amazing and we will find a way to cover the energy cost. Um, or, or it just won't matter anyway. Avenging shield bounce range increase. That's good. Um, again, I consider that to be a quality of life thing. The range, I think, even could go higher. Um, there's been several times where I thought monsters were close enough to bounce and that it didn't... Um, and it's one of the reasons I don't like the the shield so much. The other one being I can't remove the cooldown if I want to. Um, it just it has a cooldown, and if you don't like it, too bad. Um, smite, increase weapon damage. This seems to be another one of the the patterns that's been happening through these patch notes. All of the procs. Um, so I'm imagining shattering smash is the other one. Uh, yep, another fifteen percent. Yeah, so all of the, the weapon procs now do 15% more weapon damage, which is, is really good. Um, travel distance on Vyas Might, okay. Definitely got to finish that skater, um, because this is going to make it even faster. And Tectonic Shift, which is uh, the last node on uh, Vyas Might. Increased bleed damage scaling with rank, so it already does bleeding damage. It's just going to do more so there we go, that is the end of the preliminary um, patch notes. Um, I realize this was a bit of a longer video, but um, yeah, there we go. That's the changes. Um, I think overall, generally positive changes. There's a lot more uh, health regeneration, which I guess is to balance out the fact that they, they nerfed attack damage converted to health. So I see this as a win for casters and a bit of a loss for melee. Um, it's probably, well not probably, it's almost certainly not the end of the world um, because I see a lot of melee builds are uh, not taking a lot of defensive things. So maybe now they'll have to take um, more than just take the ghoul and you're good. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, the Alexa's flash freeze change is A plus S tier absolute gold. Um, that skill, and to be fair there are other skills like it where if the debuff can't be applied then uh, you don't get the damage. So uh, I think Warcry on Soldier was one of them. Uh, changes like that I think have needed to happen for a while so that's definitely a good thing. And the changes to the uh, the healing skills that also apply buffs, so Word of Renewal, Pneumatic Burst, and Driggs Evil Eye, also really good. Um, Things that were not in here that I would like to see are fixes for other OFF-like skills so that you can get the damage even if you don't get the debuff. Um, I would also like to see the skeletons change to have the same uh, leash range, so the same aggro range as all the other pets. I don't even mind if they reduce the larger pets' aggro range to match the skeletons. As long as they're the same, we're good. Um, so I would like to see that change. Um, I would also like to see some UI changes. So for example, when you're on the Devotions page, I would really like to be able to zoom out further. So same as you can on GrimTools.com. You can zoom out and see the whole thing. Uh, you can't do that in-game, and it's a little bit frustrating. Um, what else? What else? What else? That's about all I can think of off the top of my head. Um, but overall, I think this is a really good change in general. Um, I definitely like they changed the uh, the arcane nullification to be five seconds instead of two. Um, 
good stuff. Anyway, that'll be all for this ridiculously long patch note viewing or reading. And uh, so thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and goodbye for now.